In our last video, we were introduced to trigonometry, and specifically, we started to understand how trigonometry relates to triangles, because it is really based on trigonom, means triangle, metric means measurements. So it's based on this measuring the sides or the angles of a triangle. And then we were introduced to some trig ratios, so sine, cos, and tan, and there were a couple of different ways that we could remember it, but one of the common ones is so, ka, toa, just a little fake word that helps us remember. Sine theta is the opposite of the hypotenuse, depending on which angle you're working with. Cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So we looked at it in a triangle. We also saw that each of these had a reciprocal. So in other words, if I switched this over and I had hypotenuse over opposites, then we were dealing with cosec of that angle. Okay, if I switched this one and I said it's hypotenuse over adjacent, then we were dealing with sec of that angle. And finally, tan, if I swapped that and said adjacent over opposite, then we were dealing with cot of an angle. Okay, and something worth noting is that if ever you need to deal with this, you'll see these buttons aren't on your calculator. Cosec, sec, and cot, those are not buttons on your calculator. But if you know who they belong with, you can actually use one divided by. Okay, so in other words, cosec on my calculator, I can simply type one divided by sine. Sec on my calculator, I can simply type one divided by cos. And cot on my calculator, one divided by tan. So these co-functions, they really only come up in grade 10, but if you see them and you need to calculate them for whatever reason, then you can do so on your calculator. It's the same as saying one over sine theta because that would switch the H and the O around and the same thing for the other two. Today's video is gonna focus on solving trig equations. But before we do that, I just want you to take note of two things. We could either, because trigonometry applies to triangles, we could either be solving for a side length, okay, and that is when we are given an angle, angle given, okay, or we could be solving for the size of an angle and that is when the angle is missing, okay, solve for angle, okay, and so that answer would be in degrees and side length, depending on what other information we've got, is usually in units. Okay, we're going to solve triangles in one of our later videos, but for today we just need to get a good solid foundation. So let's look at two examples so that I can point out to you what it looks like if we are looking for a side length or if we are solving for an angle. So the question says, solve for P in the following equations. P is equal to sine 30. And question two, cos P is equal to 0, 7. So these are two questions that we could expect to see in our paper. Usually about five or six marks goes just to plain old trig equations. They do get a little bit more tricky than this but we are still learning, so we will build to some trickier questions a bit later on. Okay, in both instances, P is the unknown, but have a look at the first question. The angle is given, and so that means um, that we are actually solving for a side length here, if you picture it in terms of a triangle. All right, the angle is always linked to that trig ratio, sine, cos, or tan, and remember, we also have those reciprocals cot, sec, cosec. Okay, if they've given us the angle, things are very straightforward. Let's have a look at the next one. Do you see that P is part of that trig ratio? So in that question, the angle is unknown. And that's the thing that we are solving for. Okay, so the minute you get a trig equation, you need to just stop for a second because there are two different approaches. When the angle is given, it's very straightforward. You can simply pick up your calculator and type in there sine of 30 degrees and you can get an answer there. 
just something to double check, even triple check on your calculator, is make sure that it is in degree mode. Okay, so as you advance in maths, you're going to learn different types of modes. But for now, it's important that your calculator is in degree mode. And the only time that it hops out of degree mode at grade 10 level is if something gets bumped. So if you look at your calculator and you notice, oh, it's not, doesn't have a little D up there, then you can go shift mode and you'll have the option there if you press number three that'll put you into degree mode okay once you are there you're ready to solve all trig um so p is equal to we are going to type in there sine 30 because it's in degree mode we good we don't have to put the little circle in so sine 30 equals and we get an answer there of one over two nice and straightforward when the angle is given okay but when the angle is unknown we are going to need to use the arc function. So if you look above the sine, cos, and tan buttons, you'll see in yellow sine to the minus one, cos to the minus one, tan to the minus one. Those are the functions we're going to use when we work out an unknown angle. Okay, so we've identified that, that we need to work out angle P, and this is a cos function, so we're going to say arc cos of 0, comma 7. So now on our calculator, we're going to push shift, cos, and then 0, 7. And it gives us an answer there of 45, 57 degrees. Okay, so a half, you could probably say here units um, for the side length, and then degrees there for the angle. Okay, so it's not difficult at all grade tens. it's just about recognizing if i'm given the angle i can type it straight in if the angle is missing i need to use the shift button because i need to use arc cos in order to work out that angle okay let's just practice in all the different ways uh, so having a look at this p is over here it's on its own the angles are in place so that means this is quite a straightforward question i can type it into my calculator and these days, most calculators can understand this notation with the square here. But just to explain to you that what that actually means is that the whole sine of 50 degrees is squared. Okay, sine is meaningless without an angle. So we can't just say sine is squared and then times that by 50 degrees. The whole sine 50 is a thing and we're going to square that. So it's safer to type that on your calculator plus tan of five degrees and remember if you are in degree mode you should be fine okay so we're going to say bracket sine 50 degrees close those brackets that is squared plus 10 of five degrees and that gives us an answer there of zero comma six seven units in the next one we've got 4 cos p is equal to 12. So have a look next to the trig, and you'll see the angle is, in fact, the thing that is unknown. Okay? And so that means I want to use arc cos to solve for that angle. All right. I can't jump straight into it and say arc cos of root of 12. I need to do some, some working out first. So I need to try and get this trig ratio on its own, but at the moment it's multiplying by 4. So let's divide by 4. And what I do to the one side, I'm going to do to the other side. So now I've got cos p is equal to root 12 over 4. Okay. And that, let's see how that simplifies. That simplifies to root 3 over 2, thanks to my calculator. And now if I want to solve for this unknown p value, I'm going to say p is equal to arc cos root 3 over 2. And let's see what our calculator says. So we're going to say shift cos and then root 3 over 2 gives us an answer there of 30 degrees. Okay, so very important. We couldn't do anything until cos was on its own. We needed to divide by 4. What we do to one side, we do to the other side. And then we acknowledge the fact that the angle was missing. So we use the shift button to give us an answer in degrees. And then solve for p in the following equations. 3p plus tan squared 45 is equal to 0. 
Okay, let's try, try to identify, because it almost looks like maybe we're missing an angle here. But we've been given this angle. P is missing, but it's not um, next to a sine, a cos, or a tan, so it's not an angle. Uh, so we're okay. We can just solve this one normally. So let's start by isolating P. So 3P is equal to minus tan squared 45. Okay. And then remember what I said to you is that that tan 45 gets squared. Okay. So 3P is equal to, if we type on our calculator, tan of 45. That gives us an answer of 1, and we square that, so 3p equals minus 1. But technically, because they asked us to solve for p, I'm not there yet. I'm still dealing with 3p. So let's divide by 3. What we do to one side, we do to the other side. So that leaves us with p is equal to minus 1 over 3. Okay, and then finally, this next one looks really complex. Okay. We've got 4 sine p plus 10 is the angle minus 2. So I do want to shift sine here, but I'm not ready to do that yet. So let's start just by isolating the trig and its angle on one side. Okay, so the first thing we can do is we can move this minus 2 over. So we'll be left with 4 sine p plus 10 degrees equals 2. All right, then we're going to divide both sides by 4 so that we just have sine over here. Okay, 2 over 4, I can simplify that. So sine p plus 10 degrees is equal to a half. And now we might be tempted to say, sine p sine 10 but it doesn't work like that okay this is considered one angle so be very careful there one angle so we're now ready to go all right let's arc sine it then so we're going to be left with the angle here of p plus 10 degrees is equal to arc sine of a half okay on my calculator shift sine 1 over 2 gives me 30 degrees and then I'm going to take this 10 degrees that's left here and just move it over only here in my final step. Okay, so even though we're dealing with uh, trigonometry, bod mass is still very much alive and well. We've got to keep this angle in its brackets until we get to this point where we say arc sine of a half and then only can we move the 10 across. Let's have a look at one last example. Okay, not to worry because although it's cot, cosec, and sec, all the angles have been given to us. So we don't need to worry about shifting anything, but we do need to understand how we would type this in on our calculator. Okay, so thinking to our reciprocals, we've got P is equal to cot of 45. So earlier we learned that we could write that as 1 over, and the reciprocal of cot is tan, so 1 over tan of 45, multiplied by cosec of 30 degrees, so the reciprocal of cosec is sine, so 1 over sine of 30 degrees, plus the reciprocal of sec is cos, so 1 over cos of 60 degrees. And for me, cot and tan are easy to remember, but I used to get confused between um, which one goes with sine and which one goes with cos. And the way that I remember it is C for cosec goes with S for sine, one S and one C, and C for cos goes with S from sec, so one S and one C. And then all that's left for us to do is just type this into the calculator, and P is equal to four. Okay, so if ever you get cot, cosec, or sec, Remember that because they are reciprocals, you can just write them as 1 over the reciprocal.